Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com where I'll help you design smarter, not harder. Today I'm demonstrating a really simple but stunning effect. Let's create this modular halftone grid in Photoshop. So I'm in Photoshop right now and I've got my classic document size open, but you can really do this in any document size that you want. However, if your DPI isn't at 300, then you may have to adjust some settings and numbers to get this to look right. So I just recommend using 300 DPI no matter what document size you're on. Personally, I'm using 16 by 20 inches at 300 DPI. Feel free to copy those settings. That's what I use for pretty much everything I make. So this is our parent document, but we're actually going to need to make another document. So let's go up to file new and we'll create a new document with these settings so set the width and the height to 100 and the resolution to 72. the rest of this stuff doesn't matter let's just go and click create here so in this 100 by 100 document you're going to want to make a circle using the circle tool so go ahead and go in the shapes tool right here click and hold down to find the ellipse tool and then just go to the top left corner hold down shift and click to drag a perfectly even circle out throughout the whole document the most important thing is that we have this circle completely centered within the document if you want to make sure that just do command a on your keyboard that will select the entire document that will select your whole canvas and then go up to the transform controls over here to align it to the center vertically and align it to the horizontal center the circle is already centered so i don't need to worry about that but what i do want to do is make this smaller you can make this however small you want the closer this circle is to the edge of the document, it's going to lead to more bleed in that halftone grid effect that I showed you earlier. But I'm not going to experiment with any of that right now. I'm just going to make this about 25% smaller. So I'll go and do Command T on my keyboard to transform this. And I'll hold down Shift and Alt to make sure that when I transform this, it is both proportional and stays in the center of the document. And so I'm looking right up here to see just how much I scaled this down. This is just about 75%, but just to get it right on the dot, I'm going to go ahead and just type out 75 in both the width and the height parameters right here. So now this is scaled down perfectly by 25%. The next thing I want to do is create a pattern out of this. So I'll do Command A on my keyboard to select the whole canvas. Then I'll go up to Edit and Define Pattern, and I'll just name this Circle Pattern. Doesn't matter what you name it. Cool. So now let's head back to our parent document, and in here we can start making the grid. So first step here is to grab actually our rectangle tool back. So that's back in the Shape tool. I'm just going to make a perfectly even square by holding down shift and dragging this square across the canvas. You can see as I drag it that I have the details of the width and the height in their pixel dimensions next to my cursor here. So you can make the square as big as you want. Just make sure that the number that you choose for the width and the height is an even number. And you don't want to pick an ugly and ridiculous number like 2313 or anything like that. I implore you to pick a pretty number. But really, as long as it's an even number, you're good to go. I'm going to go with about 3000 here. Holy shit. Okay, right there, that's 3000 on the dot. I'm going to center the square in the middle of our document as well by doing Command A on my keyboard and pressing these center align buttons here so this will align it in the vertical center and this will align it in the horizontal center now we're just going to turn this rectangle into a small object so we're going to right click the layer and convert it to a small object and then we're going to open that small object by double clicking on the thumbnail of that layer and in here you just want to turn this original layer off we're not going to need that anymore we'll go down to our adjustments and create a new pattern fill layer and for the pattern you're going to pick what we just made which is that circle pattern and this will fill up the whole canvas with this pattern circular grid pretty much you can also adjust the scale if you want more or fewer dots notice how all the numbers i've been working with so far are all multiples of 10 that way this grid is completely even so i'm just going to stick at the classic 100 i'll press ok on this and now we can save this small object with command s and go back into our parent document over here and now we have this perfect circular grid back in this document the next step we're going to take is gaussian blur in this by low so we'll go up to filter blur gaussian blur and this number can be played with for sure after the effect is complete but for now, I'd recommend sticking to anywhere from 8 to 16. I'm going to go with a measly 8 here. I'll press OK on this. And now we just want to throw a threshold adjustment on top of this layer. And would you look at that? We can adjust the size of the circle just by adjusting the parameters of the threshold level. So that's pretty cool, but let's do something cooler. So you can throw pretty much any image that you want in here. I'd recommend using a silhouette, but even if it's not a silhouette, it's still going to work just fine. I do think a silhouette looks the best with this effect. But if you're not using silhouette, I just recommend after you throw the image in there, to play with the levels of that image to get it looking just right and actually visible within the grid, which we'll see what I mean in just a second here. So I'm using a silhouette. I'm just going to drag that into our document. I'll bring that in about the middle of this grid and I'll scale that up to size. You also want to make sure that any image you throw in here is going below the threshold layer. So I'm going to drag that below that layer. Always make sure that the threshold is on top. Next up, we're going to turn this image layer or silhouette layer into a smart object. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go up and Gaussian blur this. So filter blur 
gauge and blur. So I'd recommend using anywhere from 16 to 40 on this. Of course, you can play with this and find what settings work for you. I'm going to go with about maybe 30 here. I'll press OK on that. That already looks pretty interesting, but now we can set this layer to overlay and it's going to relay that silhouette information back into the circular grid here. And so now wherever that silhouette is, it's going to be reflected in this circular grid by means of bigger dots. It's a little tough to see right now, but if I go into the threshold adjustment and turn the parameter all the way down to maybe in the 30 range, you can see that effect really start to take place. Even so, the silhouette is a little hard to see. So if you want to make that really pop out within the grid, all you have to do is duplicate this layer here, and that'll pretty much double the effect. You can duplicate that as many times as you want to heighten that effect even more. I'm gonna keep it to around two because I think that's the most tasteful effect. And of course, we can go back into the threshold and play with the threshold level to get the desired effect. Now I'm just gonna put these two silhouette layers in a group so we can move them at once. And you see, once we start moving this around, this effect is completely live. We can move this around wherever we want. We can even add more stuff in here if we want to and it's all going to interlock in real time so that's pretty much the effect but i also want to show you how i got here not only that i kept this effect completely live so let's check out how i did that so first you're going to want to duplicate your background layer i'll click on my white background and do command j to duplicate that then i'll put all this in a group so the background the rectangle or image or silhouettes and the threshold so i'll select all of them put that in a group with command g and now we want to go into the layer styles of this group so double click on that group and go to the blend if section and just drag the current layer white blend if slider a little bit to the left and that will pretty much entirely remove the white background so we'll press ok on that and then we can put this group into another group by doing command g and now we can just start throwing any effects we want on this so i'll go into this upper groups layer styles by double clicking on that group and the first thing i want to throw on this is a color overlay you can obviously choose whatever color you want i really liked how the gray looked on a black background so i'll press ok on that and i'll just really quickly turn my background black so i can see the other effects that i'm doing i'll go back into the layer styles of this group and i found that adding some drop shadows some hard drop shadows rather looked really cool so i added a few of those this one right here in particular looked good it's just a red or orange drop shadow with the distance on five the spread on 100 and the size on one and that's all i really needed the effect looks pretty good from here so i'll press ok to finish this off i'll just throw in a paper texture from my Pretty noise texture kit which is available on my website so i'll just drag that right in here scale that up to size set it to screen so that's looking pretty damn cool and this effect is also of course still live within the groups so like i said i can move this around i can add other things in here and it's all going to be interlocking in real time we can of course still play with the threshold level or the blur levels of any of our smart objects i think upping the blur level on the rectangle can yield some pretty cool effects here's where upping it a few pixels did to mine so yeah just play with any of these settings and dial that in until you get the effect that you want and that's pretty much it guys i hope you make some cool graphics using this technique if you want to go pick up my printer noise textures you can use the code youtube 15 at checkout for 15 percent off of your order if you learned something like this video if you like me subscribe to the channel i post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer i'll see y'all in the next one peace out